Although there are many aspects of Cappadocia in which we have touched upon in the past, mentioned its apparent incredible antiquity, and to some degree investigated and explored some hand-picked sections of this incredible site's numerous anomalous features. However, there also exists, although considerably lesser shared, an equally enigmatic yet seemingly additional hidden past. A fascinating area of study, which we feel requires far more in-depth study. Cappadocia is seemingly home to more than one very ancient, now lost civilizations, littered with seemingly prehistoric ruins, treasures of antiquity, invaluable in our ongoing attempts at understanding our distant past. During the following synopsis, we intend to put forward sufficient evidence to suggest that not just one advanced, now lost civilization once called this place home, but that the site was once home to more than one extremely ancient yet extremely well-preserved legacies from what we recognize as ruins left by varying civilizations. We feel that due to the site's location, it has, predictably, yet we presume reluctantly, undergone substantial academic explorations, most possibly to create a permitted chronology, whether accurate or not, for the history of the site. With a rarely experienced buzz within mainstream circles, surrounding futile attempts accompanied with supposed explorations and explanations for many of these still visually stunning yet utterly puzzling sites. Anyone with an alternative opinion regarding the site, however, one we often conclude to be logical grounded, accompanied by many examples of incredible artistic abilities, comparatively impossible to have achieved with the tools accessible to the academically claimed builders. One often senses that many funded, obedient academics find themselves considerably out of their depth when it comes to producing a solid intellectual explanation for the many anomalies we highlight. Encountering almost impossible tasks in producing logical explanations for not only Cappadocia's almost inconceivably huge labyrinths of underground complexes, some so large they are classified as underground cities, each and all hewn direct from solid bedrocks, some to considerable depths, now understood to plummet hundreds of feet into the rock of Earth's mantle. The more impossible this task seems to become. The challenges involved in explaining, and most crucially demonstrating, how these mazes of tunnels and passageways were created and in addition secured. These ancient builders somehow, utilizing enormous rolling stones that modern man would find to be a considerable and extremely effective obstacle, once painstakingly carved, transported, and placed into their purpose-built ruts, somehow becoming a working blocking mechanism which, to this day, we still don't fully understand how they work them, or even manage to unravel any logical technique possibly once used to utilize these incredible blocking stones. However, as previously mentioned, it is not just these incredibly ancient underground labyrinths which make Cappadocia one of antiquity's least understood, yet clearly one of the most important ancient locations on Earth. There are many other parts of this enormous ancient wonder that many people are predictably little aware of, and the reason for this may soon become apparent. Although underground layers, such as that of Derinkuyu, have an appearance akin to the Neolithic Age, in other words, displaying the scars of relics which are unimaginably old, although located in the open air and at the mercy of the far more rapid erosion triggered by weathering the site, and also displays sections which show advanced stone-cutting technologies, absent the tunnels, and was clearly created at a much more recent date, which, unlike the sites which display extremely ancient ages, namely the underground cities, are seemingly from a vastly different time in antiquity. Hopefully, as the evidence and knowledge regarding said sites grows, we will hopefully one day fully decipher the mysteries of not only Cappadocia, but our own past as a whole. It is a subject which we find highly compelling. Divers from oil companies located within the North Sea have been discovering the remains of a drowned ancient city, which once spanned from the UK all the way to Denmark. 
an ancient city so massive its suspected population has been estimated well into the tens of thousands. A team of climatologists, archaeologists, and geophysicists have now successfully mapped the area, which has revealed just how vast and expansive this once lost land once was. Many specialists are now claiming this was once the real heartland of Europe. This enormous civilization is now believed to have dated back to some 8,000 years ago and that the landmass was submerged over a period of several thousand years, a submersion which began some 20,000 years prior. Dr. Richard Bates of the Department of Earth Sciences at St. Andrews, who organized the Drowned Landscapes exhibit, covering the finds within the UK, says the data reveals the human story behind Doggerland, a now submerged city of the North Sea that was once larger than many modern European countries. Could these discoveries reveal Doggerland as the real lost city of Atlantis? Several hypotheses have placed the sunken island of Atlantis within modern northern Europe. Most noted among such researchers is Olaus Rudbeck, who suspected that Doggerland, as well as a Viking Bergen Island, which is thought to have been flooded by a mega tsunami following the Storega slide in 6100 BC, is the real location of Atlantis, a proposition he put forward all the way back in the 1600s. Some have proposed the Celtic Shelf as a possible location, and that there is certainly links to Ireland. Many places have been put forward for the possible location of the sunken city throughout the years, yet none have revealed ruins worthy of such claims, many of these areas being too small to have housed such an enormous city. Doggerland, however, fits the bill. Not only could it turn out to be the largest ancient civilization found on Earth, but it also rests in a possible location based on historical research for the city of Atlantis. It was submerged at one point in its history, and it is revealing astonishing ruins of a once great and presently unknown civilization. Dr. Bates, a geophysicist, said Doggerland was the real heartland of Europe until sea levels rose to give us the UK coastline of today. We have speculated for years on the lost land's existence, from bones dredged by fishermen all over the North Sea, but it's only since working with oil companies in the last few years that we've been able to recreate what this lost land looked like. When the data was first being processed, I thought it unlikely to give us any useful information. However, as more area was covered, it revealed a vast and complex landscape. We have now been able to model its flora and fauna, build up a picture of the ancient people that lived there, and begin to understand some of the dramatic events that subsequently changed the land, including the sea rising and a devastating tsunami. The research project is a collaboration between St. Andrews and the Universities of Aberdeen, Birmingham, Dundee, and Wales Trinity St. David. I will keep you posted on their future discoveries. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Lake Titicaca. This familiar named lake is located deep within the Andes. Now sliced in two by the borders of Bolivia and Peru, it is not only the largest lake in South America, but it is also undoubtedly the most important historically that can be found anywhere on Earth. Many tales have surfaced over the years involving submerged citadels, mountains of gold relics, and vast ancient ruins scattered across the lake bed. Stories of amateur archaeologists becoming very wealthy from astonishing yet not publicly disclosed discoveries which lay beneath the waves. We found 2,000 objects and fragments, declared Christophe Delarere, a Belgian archaeologist at a ceremony in La Paz. According to Christophe, divers from his team found the objects more than 7 meters underwater off the coast of the Island of the Sun. These included 31 large golden relics. Archaeologists think these discoveries are just the beginning of something far greater, and for good reason. As time goes on, claims made a long time ago begin to appear more and more likely. According to Colonel John Blashford Snells, a notorious explorer, his extensive explorations of the lake, the surrounding ancient culture, and his resulting research, the ancient city of Tiwanaku, very near the lake shores, copied their original building knowledge from the scientists of the mysterious and legendary lost city of Atlantis. Interestingly, ancient Incan legend also corroborates his conclusions, stating that the mythical founders of their amazing empire did indeed once emerge from the lake's waters. The lake was considered the center of the cosmos by the Incan people, and they also somehow knew its shape, something we have only been able to achieve from a very high altitude. 
Ancient Inca legends tell that after a great flood, the creator god Viracocha emerged from Lake Titicaca. It's stated that he created, though this more than likely means they believe he restored the sun, moon, and stars. Viracocha was fair-skinned and long beard. He brought a great culture to the ancient peoples of South America. The 16th century Spanish chronicler Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa recorded in his Historica de los Incas a tale about Manco Capac, the first Inca. According to Inca mythology, the Inca are the direct descendants of a mythical first Inca named Manco Capac, who emerged from one of the three openings in the mountain Tambotoco, located 33 kilometers to the south of Cusco, Peru. Manco Capac is said to have created the Incan civilization through Varacocha. Even though his figure is mentioned in several chronicles, his actual existence remains unclear. Could this original and possibly vast ancient culture still be resting upon the bottom of Lake Titicaca? Did something catastrophic occur in our very distant past which filled this lake, once a large fertile valley, filled with what we have all become familiar as the lost city of Atlantis? The University of Seville, working in collaboration with the Andalusian Institute of Historical Heritage, has conducted an intensive LIDAR survey in a historically compelling area between the Spanish coastal towns of Capasoto and Sancti Petri. Their goal was to discover the remnants of a long-written-of temple, one dedicated to ancient deities. However, what they discovered instead was an incredibly ancient, once enormous, mass dwelling. Complex, yet intelligently laid out, as if almost akin to modern-day standards of care in regard to sanitation management, food production, and quality of dwelling for its massive population's well-being. A mega-metropolis that, predictably, the academics responsible for its discovery have not only attempted to downplay the find, but also tried to claim it as merely proof of their original temple assertion. Clearly, they are merely backing the tale of events put forth by whomever funded said expedition. From the researchers themselves, quote, The survey area consisted of submerged landscape, seemingly dominated by a series of ancient marshes. Something we feel was most probably intelligently managed farmlands prior to the Great Deluge, which eventually drowned this entire mega-metropolis. Yet I digress. They continued, The study revealed a new ancient coastal landscape, with the presence of moorings, an inland port, and several large, monumental buildings." End quote. By combining data from previous anomalous discoveries, the team created a cross-section of findings, and by a process of elimination, they pinpointed an area in which to scan. Yet, interestingly, after said discoveries of the structures, they quickly and simply delimited the entire area without any further field study or investigation whatsoever. Could this rapid delimitation of the area in regards to the LIDAR scanning possibly be in an attempt to obscure the true enormity of this pre-flood ruin? During their focused investigation, they found rectangular structures some 300 by 150 meters in size. However, these discoveries contradicted their own strictly followed academic accounts of this supposedly legendary temple's whereabouts. This discovery being the mission's objective all along, yet curiously, as mentioned, any further expansion of the LIDAR investigations, academic funding has been stonewalled. Could their reluctance to continue further investigations on a mission which has already clearly cost a lot of funding due to them actually having discovered yet another complexly, intelligently, clearly advanced pre-flood megametropolis? Well, we find said possibilities and the rapid growth of independently owned LiDAR technology incredibly exciting.